Welcome to another edition of the Apostasy Report. My name is Joshua Ravi Zacharias, unmasked indeed. Before you object, listen to the entire video. Watch the entire video immediately. Many of you will be poised to object emotionally, not factually, certainly not biblically. And as a preliminary note, let me just say this. If you are inclined to invoke Matthew 18 as a reason to dismiss or otherwise discredit anything I'm saying, please go back and read the verse in context. Matthew 18 has to do with personal sin. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him your fault between he and you alone. In the case of someone apostatizing, like Ravi Zacharias, leading other people astray through the pro public proclamation of error or capitulation to error, Galatians 2 is the model. Publicly withstand them. Paul did not approach Hymenaeus and Philetus personally. John did not approach Diotrephes personally, but he wrote about them publicly. They wrote about these people publicly. When error is being propagated in a public forum, take Matthew 18 out of the equation. You're quoting it out of, out of context, um, and it's, it's done in an emotional knee-jerk reaction and fashion. Stop doing that. Um, let me start by saying this. Uh, let, let, let's also address the fact that um, if any of you think that you're capable of talking to Ravi Zacharias personally, let me first just challenge you. Secure a sit-down meeting with him. Good luck. Good luck. It will never happen. So if anybody says, well, how come you didn't talk to him first? G good luck. Good luck getting a hold of him. You first. If you can get a hold of Ravi Zacharias and have a sit-down meeting with him about something like this, uh, boy, will I be impressed. It won't happen. Let me start by saying this. As a new believer in the Lord, I was uh, initially drawn to uh, Ravi Zacharias. I don't recall how I first heard of him, but suffice it to say, I spent probably an unhealthy amount of time listening to and indulging in Ravi Zacharias material. From lectures to books to curriculum. I have I've purchased several and read several books authored by Ravi Zacharias. I have listened to dozens, if not hundreds, of hours of lectures from Ravi Zacharias dating back to probably the late 80s. So this is coming from the perspective of one who has every reason uh, to not say this. I was heavily influenced by this man as a new believer in Christ. And I recommended him heartily to other people. He was uh, at the top of my list as a new believer. Um, and I didn't know the things that I know now, but I have heard good things from Ravi Zacharias. He, is, he waxes eloquent. His working vocabulary is impressive. Is impressive. He, he's a raconteur. He's a great storyteller, a very captivating presence, and uh, a seemingly formidable force when it comes to um, engaging people uh, logically in the apologetics realm. I say seemingly uh, because although he uh, is capable of addressing uh, many superficial questions, uh, theological robustness is uh, is not what exudes from Ravi Zacharias, as you're going to see here. The point in all of this is that I have listened to and been a supporter of Ravi Zacharias in my past. And because he had an influence on me, I should have uh, significantly less reason to engage in this. So for anybody who wants to say, ah, you're bitter, you're whatever, you have some vendetta, I, mean, I get this all the time about anybody. We are dealing with truth. If what I am saying and presenting is true, knock it off. 
If you don't have a biblical or factual objection to what's being said, perhaps you should cease objecting because it will be emotional babble. That's it. That's all it can be. Object biblically and or factually if you have an objection. Now, this isn't typically uh, an area that I want to venture into unless there's a a good reason to do so and unless there seems to be a a solid measure of credibility about it. Uh, The concerns are primarily doctrinal, but as you will uh, see with many of these men, when there is doctrinal aberrance, very often there is some moral uh, deviancy tied to it, whether you know about it or not. And Ravi Zacharias Is he violating his federal lawsuit non-disclosure agreement? Does anybody care? Well, what is he? What are they talking about here in this article? Lawsuit not for many people don't know about this. I don't know. uh, This this did not gain as much attention as I thought it would when I first heard about this a couple years ago, year and a half ago, maybe. Ravi Zacharias from his own website says this in October 2014, I spoke at a conference in Canada at the conclusion of my talk. I met a couple who expressed an interest in our ministry. The wife asked if I would reach out to her husband because he had questions about the Christian faith. As requested, I followed up by sending an email and a book to him and invited him to consider attending one of our educational programs at RZIM. Some months later, I traveled with my wife and our daughters to another part of Canada for a speaking engagement. The couple attended this event and invited my wife and me to dinner at a local restaurant afterwards. This was the second and last time I was ever in the same room with either of them. Subsequently, she began to contact me via the email address I'd used to contact her, her husband, after the first after first meeting them. My responses were usually brief. Then last year, she shockingly sent me extremely inappropriate pictures of herself unsolicited. I clearly instructed her to stop contacting me in any form. I blocked her messages and I resolved to terminate all contact with her. In late 2016, she sent an email informing me that she planned to tell her husband about the inappropriate pictures she had sent and to claim that I had solicited them. Let's just stop there. This is this is Ravi's own words. This is his own statement. So he acknowledges that she sent him inappropriate pictures. He says that he blocked her messages and resolved to terminate all contact with her. But notice what he didn't do. He didn't contact her husband, even though he had the husband's email address, apparently. He didn't attempt to contact the husband. He doesn't say anything that I immediately sought to contact the husband and say, hey, your wife just sent me some lewd photos. This is incredible. He didn't say that. Already something is amiss, even with his own statement. She planned to tell her husband about the inappropriate pictures she had sent and to claim that I had solicited them. In April 2017, together they sent me through an attorney a letter demanding money. I immediately notified members of my board. And as they advised, I personally engaged legal counsel. So uh, he goes on to explain the, the details of what happened here. Okay. People are extorted all the time, and that's a that's a legitimate thing. Uh, this happens in in the realm of Hollywood and, and fame. Uh, c- celebrities generally have to keep retainer uh, attorneys uh, on r- uh, retainer because frivolous lawsuits are filed all the time against them. There's always somebody trying to make a buck, and um, I don't think that that's something to be overlooked here. However, the way Ravi Zacharias handled this. And the subsequent uh, statements that were made seem to indicate that there was some culpability on his part. Now, I believe him when he says he wasn't in the same room with this woman. However, let's see. This is written by the Christianity Today International. The federal lawsuit, which was filed by Zacharias, not the couple, alleged that his friendly correspondence with the wife evolved over the course of 2016 to her sending him unwanted, offensive, sexually explicit language, and photographs. In April 2017, the couple sent a letter to their attorney demanding millions of dollars in exchange for keeping the messages secret. It appears that they did try to extort him to some degree. That's what it appears. However, I don't think both parties are guiltless. Why do I say that? Here is the letter sent by Bryant Law Center. 
Um, this was April of 2017. So this is from their attorneys to RZIM and his staff. Uh, down here, I can't highlight it, but it says, in an email, many lengthy telephone conversations with you. We have copies of your emails and the call register. Lori Ann, apparently the name of the woman, informed you of her decision to tell Brad, her husband, about this misconduct. You responded by email that you would end your life and, quote, bid this world goodbye if she confessed and outed you to her husband. You later admitted that this was not true, and we have independent confirmation of many of these discussions by an anonymous third party. So they make reference to Ravi Zacharias threatening suicide and stating, quote, uh, that he would have to bid this world goodbye. Now, here are some screenshots. This is just from a website. I cannot confirm whether or not these are the actual screenshots, but they are in accord with the letter that was sent from that woman's attorney. October of 2016, Ravi Zacharias says, are you going, apparently, it's stated that it's from Ravi. Of course, the specific address is redacted. Are you going to tell him it's me? Then he says, and I've seen another version of this, this redacted block uh, presumably says her name, Lori Ann. You promised you wouldn't, Lori Ann redacted. Uh, if you betray me here, I will have no option but to bid this world goodbye, I promise. Uh, this is exactly what was cited in that letter from the attorney to him. Um, uh, it stands to reason that the attorney wouldn't cite something that they didn't have proof of. And so this sounds quite believable on their part, on the part of the attorney. He, thus, he then says, apparently, can we not meet at least once before you do this? Please, please. Little did I know that that was the most dark and accursed day of my life. You will not hear from me again. So this completely corresponds to the uh, letter that was sent to him by this uh, Bryant Law Center. Why they would put in quotes something that was not provable, I, they wouldn't, is the point. And so while I cannot confirm that these are absolutely the screenshots of those emails, uh, it's certainly in accord with what was stated in that letter. And then here's the district court. Uh, Ravi Zacharias is the plaintiff here versus them. Okay, so you have all of this uh, information about uh, Ravi Zacharias and what he did or didn't do. Um, I don't believe that these people are guiltless. I do believe that they tried to extort him. Uh, you can read the rest of the letter. Their motivation was, we can handle this one of two ways, da 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 However, that does not mean that Ravi Zacharias is not culpable in what happened here. He makes a statement saying, the question is not whether I solicited any illicit photos. I didn't. The question is whether I should have carried on a correspondence with a woman, not my wife. And the answer is no. And for that, I'm guilty. Well, it's a clever way to frame something and um, say something that admits to some form of guilt without disclosing the full measure of that guilt. Why does it appear so clearly that he indeed threaten suicide. You promised you wouldn't if this is in fact him. If you betray me here, I will have no option but to bid this world goodbye. I promise. That is not the response of somebody who has nothing to hide. If indeed she did send illicit photos unsolicited and she said, hey, I'm going to tell my husband I sent these to you and that you solicited them. The response of somebody who didn't do that would say, I'll tell him first. Good luck. The correspondence is here. I don't have anything to hide. It certainly wouldn't be some ambiguous threat of suicide. They reached a non-disclosure agreement, and now no party can or will speak further about it. What were the terms of their settlement? We don't know. Did they receive money? Uh, very likely. That's generally how these agreements go. The point is... The spiritual degeneracy apparently led to moral deviancy as well. And while I don't know all the terms of that, 
the public relations team behind RZIM went to great lengths to make sure that this did not go any further than it, it needed to go. Did Ravi Zacharias threaten suicide? It looks like it. Did Was there uh, a, a clearly inappropriate uh, correspondence going on with this woman? It appears so. Did he engage in physical relations with her? It doesn't appear so. Nor was that uh, what was accused. But he certainly got himself in a situation that um, was uh, a morally deviant one. And then apparently threatened suicide as some scare tactic, uh, some means of deterring her. Apparently. That's what it appears, judging from what her lawyers wrote and those redacted emails. Ravi Zacharias is engaged in, again, not merely dangerous activity, but for many years now, this is a long time coming, is deceiving people whether he knows it or not.